take the faithful soul to view that land. You, you know, he he said the, he said above all to be faithful. Just be faithful. And he he spoke one time in in I believe in Revelations where you've been. He said you've been faithful over a few things. We're just we're not really we're not really all that faithful. We've been faithful over a few things. We were faithful. You know, whenever that the Lord the Lord said to come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. You know what? It takes faith to go to him. It it takes faith for you to it takes faith for you to step out and it takes faith for you to take or for you to take a hold of him and take a hold of that sweet grace. It takes faith to it takes faith to find that grace today. It takes what? And it's because of that grace that you even have the faith. And so, and so today it's still, oh, it's still by, oh, it's still by His grace that you're saved. It's still His grace that He that He blessed us to be here today. It's just all, it's just by the grace of God. Whoa, by the grace of God, I'll meet you over there someday. By the grace of God. God will meet you on that on that shore. By the grace of God, whoa! By the shore to view that land. Whoa, to view that land. Over there. All the way over Jordan. He's gone because, because God, through His mercy, through His mercy and His love, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that, whoa! Whosoever would believe in Him, oh, should not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, because of, oh, because of His love, because of His love today, we're here. Because of His love, because God so loved this world, oh, the world able to stand today. Because God so loved this world, oh, we were able to, we were able to wake up and open our eyes this morning. And you know, and you know, I, I thought about what. When, when Brother James was praying and he and he talk, started talking about virtue and and you know if you if you read the second part of the second book of Peter oh, it, it says it, it says according as his divine power has given has given unto us all things that pertain unto life it's just what well, it's his divine power today that we oh, even breathe, that we're able to even stand up today. Oh, that he's given, oh, per pertained unto life. Oh, that he's, that, and and godliness through knowledge of him that has called, called us to glory and virtue. He's, if you've got any virtue, it's because of him. If you've got any virtue, it's because, why? Because Jesus came down. Boy, and gave his life for you. If you've got any virtue, it's because he lives in you. That's where your virtue is today. Well, he said, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Well, that by these ye might be partakers. Well, nature. Well, we're, we're partakers of the divine nature today because, well, because he lives. Well, because he lives. We're partakers of the divine nature. Well, that we're able, well, we're able in these, oh, we're able in these earthly bodies to be partakers of the divine nature that he would, well, that he would live in us. That he would live in us. And he would lead us. Well, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Why well, that divine nature leads you and guides you in this world. If you'll listen to it, well, he'll always, he'll always lead you on the right path. What well, he said, what well, he said that, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. And I and I think about sometimes what what we've done out of this world and how we've gone. What well, and you, you think about some of the brothers and sisters that have gone off to these other states and places, up in places like New York and, and Chicago and all of these kinds. What? Well, Seems. Oh, no wonder, no wonder we we look at them sometimes and think about Sodom and Gomorrah and all the evil that's all around about them. Wow, the God looks down on us with mercy. Wow, He delivered us. Though I make my bed in hell, thou art there. Oh, bless His holy name. Though I 
take the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost parts of the earth. Thou art there. Whoa, God, through his tender mercy. Whoa, God, through his mercy. Oh, and the prayers of the saints delivered us out of our troubles. Whoa, God, through his mercy. Whoa, and all the prayers that these old mothers and dads and uncles and aunts and sisters and brothers. Whoa, that they prayed that God deliver us out of all out of out of our troubles and all of our and all of our sin sick ways. Well and I'll tell you that if that if you'll listen to him today he'll lead you and he'll guide you. He'll guide you right on to heaven one of these days if you if you'll just trust him. And he said he said to, and, and he goes on and he says and by this giving all diligence he said add to your faith virtue. Well that's there's that virtue today. Well how can you add how can you add virtue. Why? Because you got him. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Why? No wonder they can write a song like that. Why? Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Why? Because he lives. Oh, because he said, I'm he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Why? Bless his holy name today. Why? Add to your faith virtue. Why? your faith, thy Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today. Add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Boy, if you get him, if you get him, you'll get knowledge. If you get him today, well, he'll give you the knowledge and the understanding. He'll give you something that this world can't give you. You may, you may get out into this world and you may, and you may go to school and you may go here and go there and learn and get a master's degree. Or you may, you may get a doctrine or you may get some, one thing or another. Wow! But if you add to your faith virtue, well, oh, he'll lead you. He'll lead you to that promised land one day. Well, that he that he promised. Well, yeah, back in the time of back in the time of Joshua, whenever that they led, he led them for for forty years out into that wilderness. Oh, and you know what? And you know all the you know that every one of them that came that came out of Egypt. Boy, every one of them that was born in Egypt and came out of there died before they ever before they ever got to look into that promised land. Boy, Oh, he lets us look over into that promised land sometimes. Oh, he said, oh, you know, oh, you know, he said to add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance. Oh, godliness and to godliness, brotherly kindness. Well, he said to add to your faith. Have you got faith today? Well, add to your faith virtue. Add him. Oh, you have him today. You've got all you need. You've got all need to go to heaven. You've got all you need to live in this world. You've got all you need today. Oh, to be able to be able to know what heaven will be someday. He said to and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they shall make you that you but neither be that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you'll be what? You'll be able to see different than you saw before. And you'll be able to speak different than you spoke before. Well, because he, because he lives. Well, because he lives today. Well, we're able to, we're able to stand. Well, like, like one of the brothers said, having done all to stand. Well, having done all. Have you think you've done everything you should do? Well, uh, stand fast. Well, well, one of the old, one of the old. Patriots, one of the one of the old patriarchs back many years ago. Well, he said to stand fast. Well, stand and see the salvation of God. Well, stand today. Stand today. Stand on Him. Well, stand on the promise of God. Stand on Him today and look. Well, look up unto heaven. Oh, where your help comes from. That's where our help is today. Well. Righteousness. Why bless his holy name today? Well, he'll 
in him is truth today. He said that he said that he said that that, that truth will make you free. And I, and you know sometimes sometimes you realize just how free that you are. You get all bound up in the things of this world, and and you realize one day you look to him and say, Lord, why? in this world if we just trust him. Yeah. Well, you know, all those years that all those years that Joshua, he, you know, he was there. And all the and all the house of Israel that had come out, that had come out of Egypt had died in the way because they were disobedient unto the Lord. And I and he what well, he said to well he said to be faithful. Well having done all to stand. Well I'm standing for something today. Well he and they came to the place and you know they came to a great wall city called Jericho. And you know that whenever that they came to that place, it seemed like it was whatever word you look, use, insurmountable, yeah. whatever it might be. They had walled themselves around, and there was no way possible. There was no way possible for them to. For them to get by that, what a, what a place that was. But God gave it to them. Yeah. There, there was no way in this world that I could get to heaven. There was no way in this world that I could go. And I realized that I'd come to the place in my life that I had, I had nothing to offer him. No. no wonder you can, you know, people people mock you sometimes about singing that song, Just As I Am. Well, but if you'll, if you'll read down in it, Just As I Am, without one plea, yeah, that all. Jesus died, He died for me. Well, I didn't have anything to do with it. Well, it was Him. Yeah. Well, in Him today, in Him today we live and breathe and have our being. Well, in Him today because He lives. Because that there was no hope for. Well, they'd come down to that place and, and, uh, and the whole place had died off. I think sometimes, what in the world? How in the world are we going to make it, you know? Whenever that my dad passed away, we put him out here, I felt like that I was about 12 years old standing up here. And I didn't know how in the world we was going to make it. What in the world are we going to do? But he said, the Lord came to me and said, trust me. Yeah. I heard a, I heard an old man of God preach a sermon one time and he said, trust me. Well, God said, trust me. Well, trust him today. Well, whenever that everything else fails you, well, trust him. Well, whenever that you come to a great wall like they did, all the children of Israel came to that, all oh, that great city. Well, well, they came to that place. Well, they came to that place there. Well, the, and, and the Lord, and the Lord came to Joshua and told him. He said that you take all the, all the, all the men, all the young men, and all the ones that came up to this point, and he said that you take them out and you circumcise them as they were, as as they did whenever that the Lord commanded them to be circumcised, because none of them had ever, you know, since that time. That Abraham had come out, had come out, and Moses had led out there into that place. Well, he had, had circumcised them, and you know, and he said that you, you get everything in order, you get everything fixed up. Why well, he called us to get our lives in order? Well, get yourselves, well, get yourselves, get yourselves in order. You, you know, in, in one sense of the word, you got, you can't do anything, but you can. You know how you get yourself in order to, to receive Him? You fall right down on your face and say, Lord, I surrender. Yeah. Wow! Get yourself in order! And fall down on your face and say, Lord, I surrender. I tell you, oh, I, I want you to be my God. I want, well, I want their God to be my God. I want their people to be my people. Well, bless God today. You know, and, and you know, whenever, you know, you know that whenever the, that Joshua, he began to look. 
And there he saw a man standing over by a place, and he had a sword. He had a sword in his hand. And he looked at him and he said, Well, are you forced or for our adversaries? Why are you forced or against us today? Why are you forced or for our adversaries? Well, he said, Nay. Well, but as captain of the Lord of hosts. Well, he was, I believe that Jesus was standing there that day. I believe that the Lord and Savior was standing there that day. Well, as captain of the Lord of hosts, I come. And you know, he began to, he began to fall down and worship him. Oh, it must have been, it must have been, it must have been the hand of the Lord. Oh, oh, while I was praying, somebody touched me. It must have been the hand of the Lord. Yeah. Oh, bless his holy name today. Wow, while I was singing, oh, somebody touched me. It must have been him. Well, it must be. He's got that comfort and that and that sweet blessing today. Oh, you know, whenever that Joshua, whenever that he, whenever that he saw that man, and he revealed to him who he was. Well, he said to take off the shoes from off your feet. Oh, for where, for that place that you stand is holy ground. Well, take your shoes off. Oh, for the place that you stand now is holy ground. Oh, you know, and he began to tell him. He began to tell him what he needed to do. He began to talk to that, to that man of God. And you know, it takes a faithful soul to view that land. It took a faithful soul that day. That man, that man that stood there with that sword in his hand, he said, trust. You know, he didn't say it in those words. But he said, as captain... Of the host of the Lord I come. Oh, that's your King Jesus is our captain today. King Jesus is our captain as we move along. Oh, she's a great city. Oh, this old church is a great city as she moves along. Wow, she'll neither rock nor totter as she moves along. Wow, things may get rough sometimes for us. Wow. And unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in Him. Oh, the church keeps right on going. This old church keeps right on going whether I'm in it or whether any of us is in it today. This old church keeps on moving and it's moving toward that promised land. Oh, it's moving right where Jesus said, Oh, to come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Oh, and, he, and there remaineth the rest for the children of God. You know that he began to tell, he began to tell Joshua there that day. Well, this is what you do. He said that you take the ark of God. And you take seven priests. Everything in, you see, God has everything in his order. He said that you get seven priests and you take all the men of war. And he had already taken them all down and they had all been circumcised and they had all healed. Everything was, everything was just exactly the way that God wanted. And he said that you take the men of war and you, and you, and you, tell, and you call them out all by, by every tribe or whatever, they, whatever tribe that they're in. And you, he said that you line them up. And he said that afterward, oh, let the, let the seven priests come and let them take seven ram's horn. Oh, let them have a ram's horn in each of their hands. And oh, he said, let them, oh, bring the ark of God. Well, oh, bring the ark of God with them. Well, oh, take him. Well, oh, King Jesus is your captain as you move along. Well, oh, take the ark of God with you. Well, oh, I'll tell you today. Well, he said that. He says, and, then, and, and, and it goes on to say, and, uh, and I didn't quite understand that when I, when, I, when I first started reading that, and it said, and the rear reward followed after him. You see, that was the rear guard. That was, well, that was, that was the rear guard that followed after him. That, there was men of war in front, and there was men of war in the rear, and there was the ark of God and the priest that carried 
woman that began to, he said that you go around that great city. He said, now what? He said, now don't you speak until I bid you. Don't you say anything until I bid you to speak. Oh, and he said, and you go around, he said, and you march around that great city. He said, and let each one blow his trumpet. Oh, I tell you, that had to be an eerie sound. All of those men of war, they marched around that great city, and they began to, and as they went all the way around, and they blew that trumpet, and he, and then he said, told them to return back, to return back to their camp. And he told them, he said, that you do this six days. Oh, you do this six days, and every day, oh, you let them come, and you let them go around that city. He said, don't say anything. Oh, don't. But he said, on the day that I tell you to shout, well, then shout, for God has given you that city. Well, that's whenever, that's whenever that we can shout, whenever, whenever that we, we realize that God, that God through His mercy and His grace given us has given us that city. Yeah. Oh, we long, we long for a city oh, whose builder and maker is God. We long, we long for that house today. Oh, we long to go over there. Oh, I tell you, we're pilgrims and strangers in this world. Oh, but we long for a city. Oh, that God, that God built. We long for that place today. And He told them, He said that on the, He said that on the seventh day. He said, that, he said that you gather up all, all the men of war and the priests that follow behind us and the, and the seven, seven ram horns and the re-reward behind them. He said you go around that great city seven times. What? He said that you blow the trumpet. Oh, I'll tell you sometimes. Well, sometimes we're going to hear the sound of the trumpet. Yeah, yeah. One of these days, we're going to hear the sound of the trumpet. Oh, that that angel blows. Oh, for that that angel will blow the trumpet, and we'll know we'll know that we'll know that that it's time to go. Yeah, Jesus, we'll will, so. ah, Jesus will appear in heaven yeah. on a cloud of glory. Oh, we'll be called up to be with him. We'll be called up together to meet the Lord in the air. Oh, bless His holy name today. Oh, and you, and you know you know Joshua told him there. He said that whenever he said that whenever that you compass that city seven times and you blow the trumpet, he said when I bid you to shout, then you shout. And they went around that city and they blew the trumpet. And he began to tell them to shout. He said, "Shout for God has given you the city." And the, if they shouted, then the walls of Jericho fell down. Well, I'll tell you today, God, God is able. God's able to do anything today. God's able to take. If there's a wall in front of you, God's able to move it. If there's a rock in front of you, wow, Jesus is a rock in the weary land. Whoa, the shelter in the time of storm. Wow, bless his holy name today. Oh, I'll tell you that sometimes it seems like the wall's too high. Oh, but if you'll trust him, oh, if you'll add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and the knowledge temperance and the temperance godliness and the godliness brotherly kindness, wow. God will come down into your life. If you've got all of these, you've got Him anyway. If you've got all of these, you've got Him anyway. When you, when you have that, when you have enough faith to add that virtue, when you have enough faith to fall down on your face and say, Lord, have mercy upon me, sinner. He'll add that virtue to you. He'll add that virtue to you and that knowledge and that temperance and that godliness and that patience. And I'm, I'm the world's worst when it comes to patience. But I pray, I pray that God will still, that God will look down on me with mercy. That He'll bless me whenever that I don't have patience. And He'll, what? He said it to, He told them one time at the times of this ignorance, God winked at it. What? Hey, I hope He winks at a lot of my ignorance. What? I know that He must if He spared my life. What? He spared my life and He winked at so much of my ignorance. What? Command to call men everywhere to repent. Well, and he told them, and he told them to shout. And you know they began to shout. They began to shout, and the walls of Jericho fell down. And you know they began to compass that city. They began to go in on that great city, and they ran everywhere. And you know, you know that Joshua told them to destroy everything in that place. You know, one of these days. 
This old earth will pass away with a great noise. There's people trying to help God all the time. And they say, well, we're going to have a new heaven and a new earth. So we're going to work this. He's going to clean this earth up. They come up with all kinds of stories. But this old earth is going to pass away with a great noise. This old earth is going to burn some of these times. And I want to be... Whenever that it's whenever it's on fire, I want to be. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to be heading towards him. Yeah. Well, I want to hear him say, "God, well, come in, you blessed of my father. Well, inherit the kingdom. Well, bless his holy name today. Well, you know that there. You know that whenever that you read that story, that story over in Joshua, it talks about it talks about one one little family, one. Little That, that showed mercy. One little family showed mercy to the children of God. And God showed mercy to them. And God and, and Joshua commanded them. He said that you, that whenever that you come into that city, he told the ones that were the spies, he said that you look for that. You look for that harlot, that woman that that woman that helped you when you came in to spy out this place. Well, you look for him. You look for her. And he said that, well, he said in her house shall be saved. Now all that abide in the house today will be saved. Everybody that abides in the house of God shall be saved. Everybody today and whether whatever you want to call yourself you can call yourself a Baptist or a Methodist or whatever you want to call yourself. But you have to abide in the house of God if you want, if you want to go to heaven. If you want to if you want to see what heaven's like, you have to be in that house whenever that he comes. He said that he said that you go in and you find her. And you they had already told her. They said, Now whosoever abideth not in the house, their blood shall be on them. They told him that, well, you go out and gather all your family up. Well, that's what we try to do today. Well, I've got, you know, I, and you've got people out here so foolish that they, oh, any little thing will keep them from coming to church. I've got a, I've got a daughter out there that, that any, any little old thing will just keep them from coming to church. But I, wow, well, I'll tell you today, well, God is still merciful. Yes, he is. God is still merciful, and I still pray. Well, I still pray that God would look down on her and her family with mercy. Well, Mercy. I still pray that that, oh, that, that same virtue oh, that, that, that he talks about who can find a virtuous woman for her heart is far above rubies. Her price is far above rubies. Wow, oh, bless her. Bless her today. Oh, for it's the church of God. It's the church of God today. Her price is far above rubies. Oh, she's bought with a price. You're bought with a price today. Wow. If you want to go to heaven today, you can go. Yeah, you if can you go. want to, well, well, he said to come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Well, if you want to go to heaven, it takes you to ask him. It takes you today to say, Lord, I know that I can't do anything else. And I know that it's you. And you know, it's, it's so wonderful whenever that you realize it's, it's kind of like whenever whenever that you come to that place in your life and you, you realize you've been praying and one day you make a connection. One day you one day it just seems like you'd be on the cartoons where a light would turn on. One day you make a connection with him. And he blesses you. Whoa, and, he, and you realize, you realize that you've got in touch with the one. Whoa, that, that he hears you and you realize that he's whoa, got all power both in heaven and earth. Yeah. And it's like today whenever that the church was all gathered together. 
Jesus told them, He said, you go over there and wait. Tarry over there. Tarry over there. He told, he told us to tarry here till He comes back. Just, just tarry here and He'll be back. Tarry over here and He'll be back. Well, he, well, he told them to tarry ye at Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. Well, you, you tarry. You, tarry, you have to tarry sometimes. Boy, and, and sometimes we get awful anxious to want everything that we want right now. But I'll tell you today, whenever that, that old song says, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. Yeah. All that waiting and all that time. And they gathered up that little group. It's going to be like that here someday. Yeah, it will. Wow! praying that and you feel like that the Lord's giving you a little bit of faith the Lord you know you can tell whether the Lord's giving you the only way the reason you can tell is because he gives you the faith to, to believe that if you'll surrender right. everything will be all right and it all just happens it and it and then suddenly Suddenly there will come a sound from heaven. Yeah. Suddenly you'll be able to hear that sweet sound. And the, yeah, you'll, know who you'll be able. Yeah, he said that his sheep shall hear his voice. Right. Wow! His sheep shall hear his voice and a stranger will they not follow. Wow! Bless his holy name today. Oh, so today, if you've been praying, if you feel like God for Christ's sake has forgiven you of your sins and you want to take up membership with this old blood-washed army, that while we sing this old song, come up and tell us what great things the Lord.